Welcome back, folks. It is your boy, Editor Matt. And I'm sure by now you have seen almost every single iPhone 12 video out there on the internet. Well, guess what? This is not one of them. Instead, we're gonna look at this effect that was done in the Apple presentation, the Apple event, that I will not show too much footage of due to circumstances. I was thinking that was a pretty cool effect and I would love to figure out how to do that on my own. Uh, the only problem is that I don't have a friggin' theater and I also don't have a mini box theater, so we're gonna improvise. So I'm gonna look around the house and see if I can find something that we can use instead of the, the mini theater. We're gonna use something else, probably a box, something of some sort, and then I'm gonna figure out how to put me inside that box. Let's see if we can recreate this juicy Apple event transition, but we're gonna do it on a budget. Okay, let's do a quick breakdown of how that effect happened. So right off the bat, I would assume that this table, HomePod, are CG. They might not be, but... And then the theater behind the HomePod uh, definitely looks CG as well. I'm probably not going to do a CG box. I'll probably just use like a physical box, mostly because I don't really want to try and deal with 3D. It looks like they tracked in another shot. I'm not sure if this theater is also CG or if it's like a, a jib or something. Robots make everything look like CG, so you never know. Let's assume it's real and that they, they did like a jib shot that transitions. All right, so what do we got here? So we have, so we have the box, and then we have the inside of the box that we can track in. All right, I think I've seen all that I need to see. All right, step one, find a box. Let's, let's go find something. Okay, so I went through the basement and I found three boxes, uh, the red Scarlet W box. Um, I thought it could be cool, but um, I don't think that it's gonna work with the foam. Uh, the next up was this Christmas shoe box, uh, but the other problem is that it's Christmas and I don't really want this to be a Christmas video and it's full of Christmas ornaments. Uh, number three, just a regular old plain box. I think this is gonna be the way to go. Okay, step one complete. We have a box. Um, I think this is gonna work pretty well. I'm gonna put some tracking points on the bottom. Now for lighting, I have the perfect lights that are gonna help me do this. So I guess the next part of my plan would be to shoot something that is going to be at the back here. Now if we take a look at the apple clip here, it looks like they used some sort of jib or something to like push into the theater. Um, obviously I don't have that and as well as I don't have a second person to film So I think what I'm going to do is shoot something on my backdrop Track it into here and then composite the sides to look similar to my backdrop So it'll essentially be just like a dark gray. Oh, maybe I can make myself really small I'll be small in the center and then that way when it pushes when the camera pushes into the box it'll just like keep going and going, and then it creates like a, a um, impossible effect. I think maybe that's the best way to go. Um, gonna work. All right, whatever, let's just, let's give her a go. All right, so we have the box on this table all alone. It is being backlit by the window. I think I need some lighting, um, which I have the perfect lights for the job. And then we're gonna push in like this. I'm just gonna take a marker here and put some track points down. All right, so here is my lighting setup. I put a little tiny Quasar Q-Lion in the camera there and I'm gonna hold it with my hand while I'm filming. And then I also have a crossfade just blasting the whole room. I think that'll do me just fine. Let's give her a shot. Okay, so that went okay, but let's try it again with this setup with my phone and the light here. Oh, my mirror's dirty. I just think that the stabilization on my phone might help us out here. Let's give her a shot. Eight hours later. So it is about 12.30 in the morning. I have been working on this video on and off all day. And honestly, it kind of looks like garbage. <laughs> I filmed myself on my backdrop and I tried to composite it in, but it just kind of looks bad. I'm not super happy and I don't think it's really worth putting in the effort trying to make it look good. So I think I'm going to repurpose this video. Still have a similar effect, but not quite what we originally planned. All right, let me, let me keep working. Oh yeah, and I have to wake up in six hours. 
have to wake up in six hours and I'm, I'm still awake. Great. Okay, it is the following day. The edit didn't go quite as planned. Uh, long story short, the backdrop didn't really blend very well and I was just having too much trouble trying to get it to look good. So I got to the point where I decided to repurpose the video into something different, uh, but I think it is still actually a pretty interesting result. It still has a similar transition from the Apple video, but it's just not quite what I was going for. So here is the final video I was able to come up with. There's the video, an infinitely looping box. And for a quick VFX breakdown, we start off by tracking the camera and creating a 3D camera. I then replaced the walls of the cardboard box, removing the track points, and I did this with the corner pin tool. Then I went ahead and added some shadows and some texture, and then I masked it at the back to create an opening, and then I took the first frame of the video and motion tracked it into the opening to create the loop effect. And again, I used the corner pin tool to make everything line up perfectly. Now, I learned a few things while doing this. First off, I figured out very quickly how much easier this would be if I was a little bit better at 3D and just did this in Blender or Cinema 4D. I spent way too much time trying to corner pin track layers and make everything line up perfectly where I know it would have been significantly easier and quicker in a 3D software. Last night, I was literally up till 2 a.m. trying to make this look good and I felt like I was getting nowhere. That being said, there is something about using the right tool for the job, but at the same time, you also can only use the tools that you are familiar with. So I guess what I'm saying is I should probably familiarize myself with some new tools. I should probably sign up for Skillshare and uh, probably learn some things. My second realization is how good these phones are. I literally preferred to shoot this on my iPhone rather than the Canon RP, and mainly because of the dynamic range. It allowed me to see inside the box as well as not blow out the window, where the RP was completely blown out and the box was completely dark. There was no range. And lastly, I think the music really helped tie this effect together. Usually in a VFX video, you don't really need music, but if there's no talking, music can really tie it together. I find almost all my music on Epidemic Sound. They have tons of options and their playlists make it really easy to find the song that you are looking for. If you are not currently using Epidemic Sound, I would highly recommend it. As well, there's a link in my description if you wanna give it a 30 day free trial. Also, if you sign up, you are supporting the channel. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for the next one. Also, if you guys see any visual effects or anything on the internet where you're like, how the heck did that happen? Feel free to send it to me or tag me. I really enjoyed doing this video and I'd love to take a shot at doing some more. That is it for me. I will see you next time.